Hello, my name is Lara Ederer, and today I'm bringing you the introduction to the Ashtanga Primary Series. We'll focus on the essential components of the standing practice. I've been practicing Ashtanga for about 10 years. It was where I fell in love with the vinyasa practice, incorporating the breath, the bandhas, and the gaze. So what we'll cover today will help you build the balance, coordination, and strength to move on through the practice. All you'll need today is a sticky mat, and if you're comfortable using a block, grab one of those as well. So let's meet me at the top of the mat in Samastitihi. So as we bring the big inner toe mounts to touch, there's a slight sliver of the heels. And this posture looks a lot like Tadasana, but in the Ashtanga primary series, Sama meaning same, Stitihi is kind of the essential beginning and the termination of each of the standing poses or series. And we'll start with the Tristana method, the three-part method of the breath, bringing the breath resonant, deep breath across the back of your throat based on the principles of ujjayi, but not quite the same. And drishti, the gaze, and starting with the gaze past the tip of your nostrils, just this nice, steady focal point. And then the poses themselves, the asana, the three parts. And we'll start with Surya Namaskar A, or Sun Salutation A, but we'll start this first one, a fairly modified variation. As you inhale, extend the arms up, and press the palms together. If pressing the palms doesn't quite make sense for your shoulders, you can have space. As you exhale, forward fold, drawing the low belly in towards your spine. Inhale, float the heart, look forward. On this first one, we'll just step it back to high plank pose, really actively pressing your hands into the earth, but engaging the pelvic floor, mula bandha, navel towards spine, uriana, and really exploring kind of that inner vastness of the body. Inhale, send the sternum forward, side ribs turning on. Exhale, we'll lower this first one all the way to the floor. Pointing your toes, pubic bone down, Bhujangasana, Cobra Pose, widen through the chest. And then exhale, tuck your toes, press it up. You can either go to hands and knees or straight in a downward facing dog. So traditionally, we hold downward facing dog pose for five breaths. And continuing to keep the hugging of the pelvic floor and belly in allowing for the sitting bones to rise up more naturally versus through simply driving the thigh bones back. And your gaze in this posture is towards your navel, traditional drishti. On our next inhalation, we'll lift our heels, bend our knees, and for this round, I'll just step my feet to the top of the mat. Inhale, float the heart, halfway lift. Exhale, Uttanasana, and try to flatten the palms lining up with the outer feet. Inhale, reach the arms out and up. Press the palms together. Look to the thumbs. Returning to Samastitihi. Pose, exhale. A little bit more emphasis. Inhale, Asuriye. Exhale, forward fold, Uttanasana. Inhaling, look forward. We'll float it back this time to Chaturanga Dandasana. Exhale. Feel free to use your knees. Inhale. Roll over the toes into Upward Facing Dog Pose. Inhale. And over the toes, lifting the tailbone up. Downward Facing Dog Pose. Exhale. Returning to the Ujjayi Pranayama based practice breath. Taking your gaze towards your navel. And really lifting out of your hands, making sure there isn't any laying in the wrists, elbows, or shoulder joints. And allowing one more nice, long, steady breath in to ground your heels deeper towards the mat. Inhale, lift your heels and float feet to your hands this time. Lots of buoyancy. Inhale, lengthen the chest. Exhale, flat palms by the feet. Stand up, reach up. Inhale, gather the palms. And samasti to he pose. Exhale. So for our third Surya Namaskar A, even though there's technically five, I'm going to introduce the traditional Sanskrit counts, typically given through the Sun Salutation A. Inhale, reach up, and that's Akam, one. Exhale, forward fold, way, two. Inhale, lengthen the chest, Trini, three. Exhale, Chaturi, Chaturanga, Pancha, up dog, inhale, and try to exhale to downward facing dog pose. Steady breath. Those 
Five equanimous breath, gaze towards the navel, bond is engaged. And taking a really nice continuum of not over managing the postures, but checking in for the lift and the grounding. And allowing one more breath, resting or building strength in our downward facing dog pose. And as you inhale, heels lift, step or float, feet to your hands. Inhale, sapta, look up. Exhale, ashto, fold down. Nawa, inhale, stand up, palms gather. Returning to Sama, Sitihi. And instead of the five Surya Namaskar Bs, we'll do two Sun Salutation Bs. Starting Utkatasana, bend your knees. Inhale, gather the palms, gaze towards the thumbs. Exhale, forward fold, looking down, looking inward. Inhaling, looking forward, chest lifts, chaturanga, exhale. Up dog, inhale. Downward facing, still exhaling, left toes turn out, step the right foot through. Virabhadrasana A, palms gather, looking towards the thumbs, Angustaya Drishti. Exhale, hands down, exhaling all the way from plank chaturanga. Then big breath in, upward dog pose. Exhaling, still exhaling, right toes turn out as I step the left foot through. Big breath, palms gather, looking up. Exhaling all the way through Chaturanga, Dandasana. Urdhva Mukha, inhaling. And Adha Mukha, downward facing dog pose. Exhaling. And it's easy to get lost with remembering the pelvic tone of the root lock, Mula Bandha, navel towards spine. Uddiyana, good place to return back to that equanimous breath. Engagement of those energetic locks and returning your drishti towards the navel. Allowing one more nice long grounding breath and downward facing dog pose and inhaling the heels lift and floating feet to your hands. Inhaling lengthen, look up. Exhale, forward fold, planting the palms. Utkatasana, inhale, palms gather. And samasitihi pose, exhale. One more Surya B, inhale. And forward fold, exhale. Inhaling, lengthening. Floating lightly, chaturanga, exhale. Up dog, inhale. Downward facing, still exhaling. Right foot through, vira A, warrior one. Exhaling, all the way through, plank chaturanga. Big breath, inhaling, up dog. Exhaling, turn the right toes, left foot steps through. Palms gather, look to the thumbs. Exhale, all the way through, plank chaturanga. And rolling over the toes, inhale, and lifting through the sitting bones, back over those toes, grounding the heels, downward facing dog pose, exhale. Again, we would normally do a five breath count, holding in dog pose. We'll go right into lifting the heels and floating forward, lengthening the chest, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, plant the palms, Uttanasana. Bend your knees, sit low, Utkatasana. And Sama Sitihi pose, exhale. So facing you, we're going to work on two of the standing forward folds. Hands onto your hips. Hop your feet about hip width distance. Pelvic floor, belly in. As you broaden through the chest, exhale, fold over this empty vastness of the pelvis. Peace fingers for the big toes, Padangustasana. Inhaling, keep the belly drawing in, lengthen the chest. Exhale, fold in, sending your elbows wide. And again, that five breath count traditional, padangustasana, but really allowing for the big toe mounts to ground down, but an, a pulling action as well. Lifting your kneecaps so the quadriceps are engaged to protect your hamstrings. And feel free to bend your knees here if the toes are a little elusive or your low back feels tight. Inhale, lengthen the chest, turn into padahastasana. Hastas being hands, pada feet, so it's feet on hands pose. Once again, lengthen through the spine. Exhale, fold in. And instead of just laying into the body, there's still a lot of activation. Therapeutics of the toes into the wrist creases, a lot of broadening through the upper back. We're keeping the pelvic and belly toning so that we've got this spaciousness, this inner spaciousness to fold over. Nice, long, deep ujjayi breath, based practice of pranayama. And then exhaling, release the hands out from underneath your feet. Inhale, lift up halfway. And exhale, hop the feet together. And we'll return to the top of our mat, samastitihi pose. 
Triangle series, step wide to the right, turn your right toes out, right heel left inner arch, shorter stance than traditionally. Arms extend, taking a breath, and reaching for those big toes, once again on the right foot, and extending your left arm up. My gaze is going traditionally towards my left fingertips, which are together and energized. If your neck feels more tender or tight, you feel free to look forward or down. Once again, traditionally five breath counts. As we inhale, we'll simply lift the arms up, keep the feet where they are, but turn right toes in, left toes out, expand. Peace fingers wrap the big left toe. Now, if having your hands around the big toe mound or even anywhere on the floor isn't quite of the practice, you're welcome to bring your hands up or maybe even utilize a block. But projecting energy through the top hand and pulling in the pelvic floor and the belly. So as you inhale, lift up, there's a lot of buoyancy. Turn the left toes in, right toes forward. One of the hardest postures is to revolve trikonasana. So parita. Traditionally, bring the left hand outside of your right foot, turning the right palm up. However, at times, if that's a little bit too deep of a twist, you can always bring your left hand inside, come onto a block, or even while you're working, Take the back heel up. And taking one more breath, gaze towards that top extended hand. And exhaling, grounding down. Inhale, stand you all the way up. Pivot left toes forward. Right palm outside. And the left arm up, reaching across your midline, across the body. Deep, deep, deep close twist. Often referred to as one of the more purifying poses as it creates movement around the digestive tract and build that inner heat. Enjoying one more breath in this crowd-pleasing pose. Then inhale, spiral, open up to the right, and step or hop your feet to the top of the mat. This time, Parshvokanasana, side angle. Turn the right toes out. This time, a slightly longer stance. Beginning in Warrior B, Warrior 2. Placing your right palm, ideally, flat outside the right foot, and taking your top hand over your bicep and beyond, gaze towards those left active fingertips. And if the shoulder's a little tight, you can always take the left arm up. Or if you're working on a little bit more lift, bringing your right forearm down. But we're not laying in the joint, we're truly lifting. Another breath. Really access the feet. Stand all the way up, right toes in, left toes out, warrior B, into Parjvo Konasana or Utita extended side angle pose. Gaze to the top right fingertips. Again, the drishti being one of the most powerful aspects of this focused practice. Thinking only about the yoga, the asana, the breath, the gaze, and the mind not wandering. Inhale, rise all the way up. And turn our right toes out, bend the right knee. Parjvokanasana B, twisting. Bringing your left hand outside of the right foot and extending your right arm over your ear. Another one of those really challenging postures. However, it prepares you for a lot of the seated deep twists and some of the more intense postures that we get when we arrive into the second part of the practice. Nice long deep breath. And staying through your exhalation. Inhale, rises you all the way. And I'm going to take a block this time showing how you can either modify this pose, having the back heel down, right hand inside, so your twist is more open, the left arm up. Perhaps the shoulders allow you to take the bicep over ear. Or even working on that closed twist, but taking your block quite a bit higher. And don't worry if you struggle with this posture. It's not an easy one. Remaining for another breath. And then ground down. So we don't push off the hands. We st slowly stand all the way up. And then hop your feet back to the top of the mat. There's typically four standing postures of wide leg forward fold. I'll do two of them. First one is Prasarita Padottanasana A. Hands are into the outer hips, broadening through the chest, pelvic floor belly in. As you exhale, fold over this vastness eventually bringing your palms down. And over the course of your practice, as your flexibility increases, walking your hands, shoulder width distance, lining up with either the inner feet or even placing them behind the heels, and at some point, bringing the crown of your head down. My hands are not really that um, inactive. I'm imagining I'm trying to 
draw both ends of my mat towards one another. I'm thinking those chaturanga arms nice and active. I'll inhale hands into the hips and then stand all the way up. C variation, binding, inhale, extend the arms. So interlacing the fingers at the tailbone, broadening through the chest. Exhale, folding, prasari to C. Wide leg forward fold with the bind. This will help in some of the binding poses where we need more shoulder opening in the external fashion. We'll inhale, lift all the way up. Exhale, release the hands, bring them back to the hips and step to the top of our mat. Bring your palms to reverse namaskar, flipping the palms, bringing them to the upper chest, broadening through the collarbones. Stepping wide to the right, turning the right toes forward, left toes in, and pulling the right hand back. Intense side stretch for many known as a pyramid posture, allowing for your forehead to rest onto your shins, or at some point, if having the hands together is a little bit too difficult on your wrists or shoulders, you can make a fist, or even grab hands around opposite elbows. Inhale, we'll send you all the way up. Turn all 10 toes, left toes towards, pull the belly in, and exhale, fold. It doesn't matter if your forehead reaches your shin. In any given time frame, everyone has their own kind of progressive nature. And a deep breath, pulling up in the pelvic floor, belly in, remembering to fold over the spaciousness. As we inhale, standing all the way up, releasing the bind, hands wide, and stepping or hopping the feet together. So working on the uh, variations of Utita, Hasta, A, B, and C, starting as I face towards you, I will shift my weight into my left foot. Peace fingers will wrap my big right toe. And as I extend my right foot forward, if the hamstrings are low back or somewhat tight, you can try bending slightly or even taking your hand on your knee. Inhaling, lengthening through. Exhale, traditionally we do five breaths folding in. And for this one, we'll just do two to show you the foundations. Inhale, spine lifts. Exhale, open up, B variation. Keeping your left hand onto your hip and taking your gaze past your left shoulder. This would once again be a five breath count, but we'll go ahead and bring it right back to inhale. One forward fold breath, exhale. Inhale, lift up, C variation. Right leg is active, <laughs> lifting through the quads, through the hip flexors, not leaning back. This is where I'm lucky to say we'll call this one short, typically five breaths, and then bringing the right foot down. Going right into the other side, grounding the right foot, drawing left knee or gustas up, piece fingers around the big toes. Exhale, five breaths. For today's practice, we'll practice with two. Inhale, lucky me. Exhale, open up. It doesn't matter if you step out or have to readjust your drishti. Call it a practice for those very reasons. Repetition helps us gain more knowledge of the self, folding in. Then returning with that C variation, left leg lifting. Maybe when you're done, you'll give a love tap to your left quadriceps. And then we'll stand together, top the mat, samastitihi, working through the warrior sequence. Inhale, utkatasana, sit low. Exhale, uttanasana, forward fold. Inhaling, R to lengthen. Chaturanga, exhale. Ordva Mukha, inhale. Adho Mukha, now still exhaling, hop your feet to your hands and into Utkatasana. Belly in. We'll go right into the forward fold, exhaling, back to familiarity. Inhaling, looking forward. Taking Chaturanga, exhale. Up dog, inhale. Downward facing, still exhaling, right foot through, coming into Virabhadrasana A, Warrior One. And so taking the gaze towards your thumbs, Angustaya Drishti, it's best to look up more with your eyes versus with the neck. So I'll often teach hands in front and then tracing the gaze and stopping where you feel like the neck is taking over and the gaze has ceased to work. Tricky thing, if we keep the hands up, Transition right foot in, left toes out, vira A to the back of the room. And it's okay if you break drishti. Again, you don't need to micromanage. A lot of times you'll feel the posture without needing to see it. Then we open up into Virabhadrasana B, the noble hero part two. 
Gaze past the tip of your fingertips. Drishti keeping you focused. After five breaths, straighten the left leg, turn left toes in, right toes forward, Virabhadrasana B. Warrior two. And finishing really strong, being strong, feeling strong. Inhaling after your fifth breath. Exhale, hands down. Last time for what we consider the traditional standing poses, vinyasa series. After downward facing dog pose, you complete. So I invite you now to come into a comfortable seat. And understand that this is where we would normally transition into the seated poses, but for today, this is where our practice will leave off. But also being aware that with repetition, a continued practice, that a lot of these poses will become not only more familiar, but your experience to deepen or breathe more comfortably into them or remembering some of those Tristana components, the breath, the gaze, and the poses themselves will become more natural. It is said that the standing poses are what gives us the stamina, the strength, the balance and the coordination to achieve the challenging seated postures that follow. And for now, if you have those extra time, please take a nice rewarding Shavasana. I wanna thank you so much for practicing with me today. And please remember to subscribe to the Yogi Approved YouTube channel. Namaste.